Welcome back. In the second series or second term of lessons, we will explore playing scales and explore different keys. Before we start, let's revise some of the points from the last series. Remember that the note lengths or rhythm lengths are all related to each other. The semibrieve, the whole note, is the longest, equal to two minims, half notes, four crotchets, quarter notes, and eight quavers, eighth notes. Time signature is made up of two numbers. The top number tells us how many beats are in each bar, the pulse. The bottom number represents the type of note we are counting in in relation to a semibrieve. Each note has an equivalent rest to indicate silence. The grand stave or great staff or great stave or great staff has the treble or G clef at the top for the right hand and the treble clef fixes the note G above middle C on the second line up on the stave. The bass clef or F clef underneath for the left hand fixes the note F below middle C on the second line down on the stave. And middle C is right in the middle of the grand stave and right in the middle of the piano. The notes on the treble or G clef are easily remembered the spaces spell the word face, and the lines every green bus drives far or fast. The notes on the bass clef, the spaces, all cows eat grass, and the lines green bus drives fast or far away. We use ledger lines to access the notes beyond the stave, for example up to top C, or down to low C. Now we know all the notes on the bass clef from low C up to middle C and on the treble clef from middle C up to top C. Pause and rewind if you want to go back and take some notes before we move on to the next section. If you look carefully at the piano keyboard, you can see that it is in fact made up of notes all a semitone or a half tone or half step apart. We're going to look at the construction of a major scale. A scale is made up of eight notes. For example, C, D, E, F, G, A, B and C, or Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. The first note of the scale is the tonic, or the key note, the note from which the scale gets its name. This scale begins on C, so we have the scale of C major. Starting on C, let's give each of the notes in a major scale a number from 1 to 8. Remember that notes 1 and 8 are the same, so really we only have 7 notes in a scale, but the tonic, the key note, is repeated. Each number is a degree of the scale. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then repeated 8 becoming 1. If you look closely at the intervals that make up a major scale, you can see that going up, ascending, C to D is a tone, D to E is a tone, E to F is a semitone, there's no black key in between, F to G is a tone, G to A is a tone, A to B is a tone, and B to C is another semitone and going downwards, descending, the pattern is repeated, but backwards. An easy way of remembering the structure of a major scale is that the semitones arise at the third and fourth degrees and seventh and eighth degrees, ascending, going up, and eight and seven and four and three, descending, going down. Another way of looking at the major scale construction is to see it as tone, tone, semitone with a tone in the middle and tone, tone, semitone at the top. So it balances rather like a pair of scales or a seesaw or a teeter-totter with two tots on either side, one tot in the middle. So tots to tots. Pause and rewind if you need a little time to absorb this before we move on. 
Up until now, we have only used a simple five finger position in each hand and played with five adjacent notes. To play a scale of eight notes evenly, we need to move with ease throughout the whole scale and change fingers. Starting with the right hand of C major, as the scale ascends going up, we play with fingers 1, 2 and 3 on C, D and E, then pass the thumb underneath to play F, as fingers 2, 3, 4 and 5 moves gracefully over to then play G, A, B and C. Coming down, descending, we play C, B, A, G and F with fingers 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, then finger 3 passes neatly over the thumb to play E, whilst the thumb glides underneath, finger 2 plays D and finger 1, the thumb, plays C. Watch the pattern in the right hand. Let's practice that together using this little exercise, but this time using the correct rhythm. Listen and watch first. Now you play. Aim to prepare the thumb moving under the third finger as we ascend going up with a neat and precise 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 at the top and descending coming down, the third finger glides over the thumb and as you play the E with the third finger, the thumb swings neatly underneath and finger 2 plays D with 1 on C. After a count of 4, ready, 1, 2, Three, four. Pause and rewind if you need a little bit more time to practice before we move on to the next piece. In our new piece, Pond Skaters, watch carefully for the finger changes in the right hand in bar two, where the thumb needs to pass under to play F. In bar 6, the third finger needs to pass over to play the E and then passes smoothly under again as the scale ascends to the final C. Listen and watch first. Aim to play with the articulation, the legatos and staccatos and the dynamics. These will help you along with the phrasing. Let's learn the first line of the right hand together. Listen first. Now you play along. Ready? After a count of four, one, two, three, four. How did you get on? Did you manage to pass your thumb neatly and smoothly underneath in bar two? Pause and rewind if you need a little more practice before we move on to the second line. Moving on to line 2, remember to pass finger 3 over to play the E and then the thumb back under as the scale begins to ascend. Listen and watch first. Now you. 
aim to play with the articulation, phrasing and dynamics after a count of four. Ready? One, two, three, four. Let's play the whole of the right hand. Remember where the finger changes are. Aim for light staccatos and smooth legatos and the crescendos and diminuendos. After a count of four, ready? One, two, three, four. How did you get on? Pause and rewind if you need a little more time to practice the whole of the right hand before we move on to the left. The left hand part is very straightforward, mostly C and G apart from bar 4 where for some added colour the left hand plays an E. Aim to play the left hand at a steady piano softly with a tiny little crescendo at the end. Listen and watch first. Now you join in. You will hear the right hand played very, very quietly above to help you. After a count of four, ready? One, two, three, four. How did you get on? Pause and rewind if you need a little bit more time to practice the left hand before we put both hands together. Let's play both hands together. Imagine the right hand melody represents the delicate pond skaters dancing over the surface of a pond and the left hand is the water below. After a count of four, ready? One, two, three, four. Well done! How did you get on? Did you play expressively and with graceful finger changes? Pause and rewind before we move on to the next piece. The left hand scale pattern is similar to the right. Starting on bottom C, we play up to G using fingers 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1. And then the third finger moves neatly and smoothly over the thumb to play A, B and C with fingers 2 and 1. Descending, the pattern goes the other way. C, B, A played with 1, 2 and 3. Then the thumb, finger 1, moves neatly and smoothly under the third finger to play G. And we simply walk down the steps one finger at a time, 4, 3, 2, 1, back to bottom C. Listen and watch first. <laughs> Now you play along. Ready? After a count of four. One, two, three, four. How were your hand movements? Were they nice and smooth and well choreographed? Pause and rewind if you need a little bit more time to just practice the left hand scale before we move on. 
Listen first to tadpoles. In the left hand, notice at the beginning of the third bar, finger three passes over the thumb to play A. Listen and watch. Now you join in. Remember that the third finger passes neatly over the thumb at the end of bar two to begin bar three. Aim to play with the articulation and dynamics. These will help you with the technique. After a count of four, ready, one, two, three, four. How did you get on? Pause and rewind if you want a little bit more time to practice the first line before we move on to the second. Let's move on to the second line. In the second line, you can see in bar five, the thumb passes neatly under finger three, ready to play the descending scale passage down to C. Listen and watch first. Now you join in. Remember to pass the thumb neatly under finger three at the end of bar five, ready for the little half scale descending passage. Aim to play with the articulation and dynamics. Again, these will help you with the technique. After a count of four, ready, one, two, three, four. How did you get on? Pause and rewind if you need a little more time to practice the second line before we put both lines together. Let's play the whole of the left hand from the beginning to the end. Aim to play with legatos smoothly and staccatos nice and crisp, along with the crescendos and the diminuendos. This will help you with the finger patterns. After a count of four, ready, one, two, three, Four. How did you get on? Pause and rewind if you need a little more time to practice coordinating the finger changes in both lines before we add the right hand. The right hand part is very straightforward, all step movement apart from in the last bar where there's a skip of a third. Play the right hand piano softly all the way through but with a little more volume in the last bar. Listen and watch first. Now you join in, watch for the repeated notes and the skip of the third in the last bar. You'll hear the left hand played very, very softly underneath to help you. After a count of four, ready, one, two, three, four. How did you get on? Pause and rewind if you need a little bit more time to practice the right hand before we bring the whole piece together in a final performance. 
Let's put both hands together. Aim for accurate and smooth finger changes, lovely legato and contrasting staccatos, add in the expressive dynamics. Imagine the left hand a tadpole's playing under the water and the right hand a soft sunlight reflecting off the surface. Are you ready to play? After a count of four, ready, one, two, three, four. Well done! How did you get on? Did you manage to play beautifully and expressively? Did you play with imagination? Before we end today, let's consolidate the new technique by playing through the scale patterns in each hand, starting with the right and then the left. Watch first. Now you play along, aim for well choreographed fingers and hand movements, graceful style, graceful playing. Ready? After a count of four, one, two, three, four. Pause and rewind if you need a little more time to practice before we move on. Now let's play both hands together at the same time in a contrary motion scale. We'll use the same rhythm we've just practiced with. This looks complicated, but in actual fact the hands are mirroring each other. Watch first. Now you play along, remember, play with graceful and fluid movements. After a count of four, ready, one, two, three, four. Well done. Pause and rewind if you need a little bit more time to practice before we move on to the final exercise for today. You're doing really well and being very patient. Finally today, let's play an even contrary motion scale. Again, focus on finger accuracy, smooth, graceful and fluid movements. Watch first. Now let's play together. Aim for an even steady tempo, smooth elegant changes and well choreographed hands. After a count of four, ready, one, two, three, four. How did you get on? Were your changes all graceful and efficient with beautifully choreographed hands? Well done! This is a good foundation for the rest of the lessons in this second series. Aim to practice once or twice a day. If you find things aren't quite coming together, change the activity and come back to it tomorrow. Have fun with your scales. Play them legato, staccato, 
with crescendos and diminuendos and ritenutos. Experiment to see how many different ways you can interpret a simple scale. Remember that your practice time is very special. Decide what you would like to achieve in each session and always strive for quality practice over quantity. Remember, if you start to get too tired, stop. You can always come back tomorrow when you're feeling refreshed. Have fun with your contrary motion scales and I'll see you in the next lesson. In the meantime, happy playing.